Huawei. Uh, actually, um, we're, we're actually going to take this for video for him and, uh, and send him a video and he's going to have, a, hopefully, a group of people gather with him and, and enjoy uh, his induction into the uh, Hall of Fame. And our presenter for TJ is going to be uh, uh, Fred Winternell. Uh, Fred, in the back. Come forward, Fred. I'll give you the microphone. Also. Do they want to read his uh, part of it? I want to read your part of your reading. I don't know what it is. Come on, come on, come on. Inspiring consistency, physicality, and he had a tremendous talent. He instantly invigorated the Blues' success, and he was capable of single-handedly turning entire matches around. He was an integral part of our success, and he was one of the most dynamic, physical, and just one of the best eight men we've ever had. Uh, I'm not reading that. I'm going by my own thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Asshole. He, he, he had uh, sorry, ankles. Do what? He, he had weak ankles. He's one of the best eight men on the East Coast and in the Marshall. Uh, on the field, he had the ability to simply escalate positive momentum. It was one. It was not a unique sight to see him take an eight-man pick from the back of the scrum, 60 meters out, and then outrace the opposing back line to score a try. I've also seen him do that chip kick and then catch it as he outraced me. <laughs> he briefly left the team and returned in the spring of 2010 to help the Blues notch an upset win over New York RFC in the national playoff run of 32. Playing fullback in the Sweet 16 that year, he helped the Blues earn a win versus Metropolis RFC. TJ was named as the eight man for the Blues team decade 2000 to 2010. He moved back to Zimbabwe and represented his country eight times beginning in 2012 in the African Championship from 2012 to 2014 World Cup repechage in Russia. I will turn it over to his acceptance speech so I don't have to. Thank you, guys. Uh, the first time I saw the Norfolk Blues, I knew I had to join this club. I remember searching online for a club in the area and seeing that there was one within walking distance from home in Virginia Beach. Oh my God, told me I wouldn't be challenged. <laughs> when I introduced myself to Keith Wright and Chris Porter at the second team game against Newport News and come to watch. They told me to suit up and show them what I was capable of. I recall telling I, I recall Keith telling me that if I was a rugby player, I would have boots in my trunk. He was right. <laughs> I was fairly confident in my abilities and figured I would play a half and that they would be impressed and I could sit out the rest of the game. And then I, <laughs> I was sure the bloody nose I got started in the second half from getting subbed but Officer Fred. Winter Mental, since his first aid training to patch me up in record time. <laughs> <laughs> it was in this moment that I realized I may have just got myself on the real road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it may seem strange to say, given 
that I've represented my country Zimbabwe since leaving the Blues, there has never been a team that challenged me to perform at my best week in, week out. I had the privilege to play alongside some of the most talented, dedicated, and toughest athletes that I've ever encountered. I'm glad I never had to play a, against a black lad with Ed, Drew, Spice, and Porter, or a pack with Keith, Hamblum, Kenny, Combs, Fred, and other every other badass that came through the system. <laughs> made playing at my best so much easier and challenged me to be a team player, but more importantly, I found family in this organization. I want to thank the Blues for finding me and bringing out the best in me. I am forever indebted to this amazing team for showing me what focus and determination can yield. Thank you for the recognition of my small contribution to the powerhouse of the Mid-Atlantic. I look forward to seeing any of you when I finally get my visa and travel. Is that it?